All right, we're recording. Hi, everyone. Amy Star Allen here, and I'm joined today by my dear friend, business partner, and um, just someone that I love and adore, uh, Mr. Paul Hutchings. And I'm really excited for this conversation that we're going to be having today because, um, you know, if you follow me online or you listen to my podcast, you know that, you know, one, one of the things that I am a, a true believer in is living in alignment and operating from a place of alignment in everything that we do in our lives. And I wanted to bring Paul on today because he is just such an amazing demonstration of what this looks like. Um, in life, but also in business. And he has just kind of a, a unique mindset about um, marketing and um, learning and sh how we show up in the world. And so he's he inspires me every day with his, you know, his presence and his content and his wisdom. He's one of the wisest people I've ever had the privilege of knowing personally in my life. And um, so I wanted to share them with you guys today. And so we're gonna have an awesome conversation that I think will really help a lot to give you a completely different perspective. You know, some of the things might be not different or new to you, but I think some of the things that that Paul will will share today will open your, your mind to some things that might be a different perspective than you might have heard before. And so I'm hopeful that this interview is going to be really helpful for a lot of people. So how are you doing today, Paul? Me too. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing good. And, <laughs> and I'm hopeful too. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm hopeful too. That's and awesome. I'm just so honored, as I was telling you, Amy, before we started, I'm just really honored that you would want to interview me and share me with the people that you love and trust. It's, it's a great honor and I'm just excited to be here. So hi, everyone. Yeah. Well, like I said to Paul, when he said that to me, I said, you know, I, I'm all about bringing value to my people and I can't think of a, a more valuable conversation than the one that we're going to have or a more valuable person to be able to share with the people um, that I care about, you know, my, my, my audience. And, and so I'm, I'm so grateful that you're here today, Paul. I guess before we get into, I have so many juicy questions to ask you to, <laughs> to talk about. But um, before we get into all of that, um, I would love for you to just let people know who you are and however much of your, your backstory that you want to share so that anybody that doesn't know who you are yet can kind of get a, a better idea about, about, you know, who you are. Awesome. Well, I'm going to keep it short today because I want to get into the interview. I think that's going to be the most fun part. Um, but yeah, I'm, my name is Paul Hetchings. I'm married. Uh, we've, I've been married actually for, I always say 14, but my wife corrects me. We've actually been married for 16, <laughs> but I've been stuck in a loop and I just keep saying that. Yeah, I've been married for 16 years. Uh, four young sons ranging in ages from eight to 14. I live in Southeast Idaho, born and raised here. Uh, been in the network marketing direct sales space for well over a decade now. I started in a 1984 single wide trailer house, working in a call center, making $11.09 an hour. That's, that's, that's where I started in life. We, we were living on my grandpa's land. He had a 160 acre farm here in uh, Idaho. Um, and he said, Hey, you know, you and your wife, you're getting started. If you want, you can park your little trailer house on my land. And, and so that's where I started. And that's actually where I got introduced to network marketing, struggled for a few years in network marketing. And then I found the internet and online marketing and, uh, and some other, you know, just great lessons from great mentors. And that allowed me to start to have success success. And uh, so I've been blessed to be a top producer, top earner, uh, leadership council member, just had a lot of success. And, and um, all of that, you know, led to the achievement of my big dream and goal in life, which was to be a financially free man. I always wanted to just be free where I could wake up in the morning and have a blank slate and be able to just choose. I didn't want money to dictate what I had to do during the day. And so uh, just last year, uh, we were able to officially retire, um, which for us means our passive income equals or surpasses our monthly expenses. And you could actually say we're double retired because we meet that qualification in our, in our business. And then also we meet that qualification 
in our investments. And so now I co-founded a company four years ago called the Home Business Academy with a good friend of mine and business partner, Mike Hobbs. And that's uh, Amy. So we're so privileged and just blessed to have Amy as one of our top uh, leaders. Um, and our vision in that company is to help people build lives of freedom through principle-centered leadership. And we like to think of ourselves as heart-centered marketers. Um, and when I think of heart-centered, Amy, I think of you, you know, and aside from your talent and skill and passion and experience, like one of the things that I just love most about you is you really are heart-centered. You know, you, you care about people and, you know, um, that's, that's who we want to attract into our business. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that was a really good abridged version of your story. You really kind of covered it all quick there. Um, <laughs> and I think, you know, for anybody that that didn't know you before, it does, you did a really good job of really letting people see who you are at the core. And that's one of the things that I, you know, one of the reasons I'm in Paul's company and why I was drawn to it and why I call it my home and why I hang my hat there is because it is principle based you know, the, the conversations that we have there and the training that is provided for people that want to learn how to build a business online is principle based. We're not, it, it's not about just the latest and greatest algorithm growth hack strategy, you know, or anything like that. It's all about, um, you know, principle based, um, like the foundational stuff that is what, what causes success in the first place. And, um, so anybody that's not interested in in that isn't like attracted to what we're doing, mm. which is why we have such an amazing community because we're like minded in that way. So I love that. And Paul and Mike, you know, spearheaded this whole thing. And so, um, you know, everything tri trickles down from the top. So um, it's definitely an amazing, amazing thing that you've done, amazing place that you've created. And I'm so grateful every day that it exists because I never, um, you know, I've, I've been on marketing online for over 15 years and I had kind of given up hope that I would ever find something that allows me to live and do business from a place of true alignment and not mm. having to compromise my, my ethics or my values in some way in order to, you know, M you know, make a living. So yeah. I, I'm so grateful that you provided that. that. I, th I think that's very common for anyone who's been around the game for a long time. And that's where Mike and I were four years ago, where we were like, if we have to continue to do business like this, we'll just quit, <laughs> you know, like, and then we were like, mm -hmm. well, what if we could be the change? What if we could create a place that we wanted to call home, you know, forever? And so, yeah, mm -hmm. and you're helping us to do that. So thank you in a big way. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So um, what I want to talk about today really is about what it means to um, build a business from a place of alignment and, and you know, live your life that way as well. But, um, you know, I, I follow your content closely and, you know, the, the wisdom, the level of wisdom that you share on your website, um, it it inspires me every day and really speaks to my soul <laughs> in a really deep way because it's very similar to, you know, like what, what you teach is, you know, it's just stuff that's near and dear to my heart. So um, I have a dear friend who um, is the son of Jerry Jambalski, who, who just passed away um, last week or the week before. And um he sent me when his father passed away, he sent me this beautiful email and this, I just got it a couple days ago. And he was talking about um, like living in alignment, which, you know, this is my favorite conversation. <laughs> and he said the way, this is the way he explained living in alignment. And I love this. I just wanted to share this. Listen to your instincts, your soul, your guidance, and ignore the distractions, ignore fear, ignore the doubts, ignore the naysayers and step into each moment, trusting your inner wisdom. Mm, that's so, perfect. yeah. So, um, I know that you were, um, on one, one of your, your audios that you just posted recently, you were sharing kind of about this, you were sharing about, um, why you don't listen to the gurus mm -hmm. and how to, um, 
you know, be careful who you follow and what you're put your focus on. Can, so can you, can you share a little bit about what your take is on this, on like being really like trusting your intuition and, and um, you know, when it comes from, you know, you can talk about as, as far as it applies to life as well, but as far as business goes, what that looks like and um, why it's important to you and, and what your beliefs are around that. Sure. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think after you've been in business for a certain amount of time, one of the things that happens if you're paying attention is you start to learn what resonates and what doesn't resonate. And thankfully, uh, you, you and I both, we've had a lot of experience, you know, and so we, just like our, I think our spirit starts to recognize things that um, resonate and things that don't. And so over that course of time, you start to learn um, what things you want in your life and what things that, you, you know, you don't want in your life. And so I think, I think that's part of it. But the other part of it is, um, you know, ha having a vision for your for your life. Like, where is it that you want to go? I think there are a lot of people in the world that want to take us where they want to take us. Um, you know, Jim Rohn has this famous line where he says, uh, you know, if, if you don't plan your life, uh, you'll fall into someone else's plan. And guess what they have planned for you? Not much. <laughs> you know, that's what he says. <laughs> Not much is like the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is some people actually have, uh, you know, really not th not good things planned for us, you know? And so, um, and, and there's just, there's just so many distractions. And, and, and I actually like to think like, here's, here's a thought that's popped in my brain at some point in the past, which is, you know, like if, if I was God, and I wanted my children or the people that I, you know, that I created or put on earth or whatever, you know, I'm not here to like preach any sort of religion, but it's like, here we are all on this planet trying to figure out like, what are we doing here? You know, like what, where did we come from? What are we supposed to be doing? What, you know, what's the, what's the deal? You know, like it's kind of a big mystery, right? And, and, and then there's, there's like all kinds of people telling you like, well, we have the plan and we have the plan and no, it's this way, it's that way. And like, man, there's no shortage of people trying to give you answers to that question. But here's a thought is like, if, if, if you were the creator or the architect of the universe, however you want to, you want to define it. And you really wanted to put truth in the hearts of the people in a way that they would be sure to find it that everyone would have a chance of finding it and that no one would be misled, where would you put it? And my answer to that is I would put it inside their heart. Like I would put it inside every single person so that wherever they were, you know, a desert uh, somewhere or Africa or, you know, wherever in the world, a, a person could look inside their heart and find that message, find that, that, that guidance, that wisdom. And so, um, and so, I, th I think that's a part of it is like learning to realize that there are people that can help us. There are mentors who have gone before and have experience that's relevant to our journey and our vision and our purpose in life. Yes, all of that is there. And in addition to that, there are countless millions and billions of people who want our attention, our time, our money, and who maybe don't have the best uh, wisdom and counsel for our path forward. And so, and then another part of it for me is, uh, you know, thinking about uh, usefulness, like what is what is useful for for my life. And, and you think about like there are so many so many problems in the world and so many controversies happening and people tend to get wrapped up. And you know, I heard this great quote, actually, that said the goal of the the goal of the news is to make every problem your problem. Mm -hmm. And there are people that live that way where you talk to them and it's like stuff that's happening in Washington or this part of the world, or that part of the world, it's like, it's getting them in a state that's like really um, annoyed and angry and frustrated and sad and depressed. And it's like that you're allowing all of these things that you have zero control over, absolutely zero control over to affect your state of being and your uh, state of alignment and how you move forward. And so why not learn to tune everything out that doesn't bring you to a, like, like, like here's, here's something is like, you know, I'm thinking about how do I want to live um, in 2021? I want to be peaceful and happy and successful. <laughs> like I want to be peaceful and happy. Number one, like I want to have a positive state of mind where I can smile throughout my day and, and I can, 
I can believe that better things are waiting for me. And I can know that the actions that I take are producing a better reality for myself. Like that's what I want. And so if that's what I want, why not choose that for myself? And, and if I'm choosing that for myself, that means I'm consciously deciding to tune out anything that doesn't feed into that. And there's a lot of stuff that doesn't, you know, that doesn't feed into that. So, um, so learning to tune out the things that don't resonate. And then, and then also like with your, with your, your vision, which is kind of what we're talking about. It's like, where, what do you want your life to look like? Where do you want to go? What do you want to create? Having a vision for yourself um, that you have you have control over. So like one of the lessons in Unlimited Power from Anthony Robbins when he's talking about goal setting is make sure that what you're setting for yourself as a vision is within your control, that it's not something that's you know clear outside of your control that you can have no impact on it. And so when I think about like having a vision for your life, it's like, you know, what do you want to create with your relationships, with your income, um, with, uh, with your health? And, and like, when you think about what do you have control over, like the most control over, it's your relationships, it's your business, and it's your health. And those are also the most useful things that you can focus on for improvement in your life. And so why not learn or at least try to learn to tune everything out, everything out that doesn't align with that and then focus on bringing that vision into reality. And what I found is that I'm much happier when I do that. You know, I'm, I'm much happier because I'm living in my vision. I'm living in what I'm creating. That's better than where I'm at now. I'm living in gratitude. And then I, I just don't allow those things that are taking me off my vision to distract me because they're, that's not useful to do that. Or I don't allow those things that are getting me in a negative state to get me in a negative state because that's not useful either and it doesn't feel good. So those are just some ramblings of some of the things yeah. that have been bouncing around in my brain. I don't know if they were useful or not, but um, that's kind of like where I'm at and what I'm what I'm focusing on, you know? Yeah. No, like, I love that. I love how you, you know, like how you talked about like there are people that can provide w wisdom and counsel, right? Yeah. And even though some of these people may have gone before us and might have a lot of, I mean, they might be having a ton of success doing the things that they're doing. That doesn't mean that those things are right for us. One of the people that came to mind when you were talking about that was Oprah, because I remember her talking about like when, you know, when she got big, you know, became famous, like one of the things that she did was she stopped following everybody like she unsubscribed oh, really? from every <laughs> I didn't know email that. list. She She's like, I don't want any input that's going to allow me to compare myself to what someone else is doing and think that I have to do that or to feel less than or to think that somebody else's way should be my mm. way. She just mm. turned it all off and walked her walk and wow. lived completely from her inner guidance and alignment and stuff. And so... I love that you were just talking about that because it's like, you know, yeah, there are people that have gone before us that have a ton of success that, you know, we're going to always be tempted to try to like follow on their coattails or yep. listen to what they have to say or do things the way they're doing them. But just because they're having success doing something um, a certain way doesn't mean that that's the right way for us. And, um, and I love you know, I know also on your, that audio th that I listened to the other day, I mean, all, they're all really good and I'm, I might be clashing some of them, but the one about the gurus, like you said something about becoming a master of saying no. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the stuff that we, like the people that we follow and the, the conversations that we listen in on, like you were talking about the new app clubhouse and like all day, yeah. 24 seven, there's conversations going on on there. Right. Well, are those serving you or are those clouding your vision? Are those, are those dimming or numbing out your, your own inner voice from being able to come through because you're just constantly taking in other people's stuff. Yeah. You know? So yeah. um, I don't know if you want, if you have, more to say about yeah, that. But like I, one of the things that I mentioned in one of my recent audios relates to what you were talking about with Oprah, where I, I there's this guy back when I was on Twitter, I'm not on Twitter anymore. Woo, I quit. Um, but back when I was on Twitter, I found this guy named Naval who had this really viral Twitter thread that was called how to get rich without getting lucky. And it was really good. Like it had really practical um, insights and wisdom. Like one of them that I think you might like, uh, Amy, is he said, you can't get rich renting out your time. 
you cannot get rich renting out your time. And I know you're all about leverage, right? And I was like, ah, like that's why sometimes people are like, don't spend a ton of time prospecting. Like it's okay maybe in the beginning if that's what you need to do to make a sale. But if you're renting out your time, you're not, your time is not leveraged. And so anyway, that was a great principle. But I read through his Twitter feed and I was like, and I went to his profile. I was like, who's he following? And it had a big fat zero. <laughs> and I was like, he's following no one. And um, I heard an interview with him on, on Joe Rogan, one of Joe Rogan's podcasts. And he was talking about like peace and clarity of mind and happiness and I was like, I wonder if the fact that he's following zero people has some sort of relation to his peace and happiness and clarity, right? Probably Absolutely. because he's tuning out all of the non-essentials and he's tuning into what he's supposed to be doing and creating and focusing on um, in his life. So it sounds like Oprah did the same thing, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Well, it is hard to hear your own guidance if you're not allowing yourself to listen to it because you're just... Yeah following the guidance of others all the time, even if they're yeah. reputable and awesome. And then there's always the um, the risk of following people. Like you were talking about how you were listening in on a conversation on Clubhouse the other day and the guy was talking about, you know, sacrificing or compromise. You have to compromise everything else in your life if you want to be successful. And yeah. like, if you actually, I mean, you were saying like, you don't even know who this person is that's saying this. Yeah. or whether they're actually successful. But besides that, like, does that resonate with you? Do you want to compromise everything in your life? You know, for you, you said, no, absolutely. I don't want to compromise yeah. my family and my relationships and, and all that. And, and neither do I. So do I want to listen to someone that's going to tell me to do that when that's not, it's, it's not the strategy that I that I want <laughs> yeah. to follow, you know, yeah, but, but right. you do have to be careful because there's so many experts on the internet now yeah. that like, you know, we could end up following somebody or listening to the advice of somebody who isn't necessarily somebody that should be giving anybody advice. Right. And like, here's another thought is like, even if the advice is good, it's like, you know, like we have this tendency and I'm as guilty as anyone. I love information. Like I love to learn. It's one of my favorite things in the world, you know, yeah. but let's say I read 10 books on health and I apply none of it to my health and where I want to go. Has the, have those 10 books really helped me? No, they haven't. And so like one of the realizations I'm having this year is that I want to learn to be a student of my own life and then consume information based on, on that. So what I mean by that, like one example is like with, with health, you know, one thing I've been doing this year is I've been tracking all of my intake. So everything I put into my body, I'm tracking it all. I'm also tracking all of my exercise and then I'm, I'm just being aware of it so that I'm studying my own life and things like I'm starting to ask questions about being knowledgeable about my life that are relevant and specific, you know, to me. Um, like for example, you know, like I like to lift weights in the gym and so I'm tracking my, my stuff and, and I'm like, and, and I'm noticing that I'm doing weightlifting and cardio on the same day. And so all of a sudden this question pops up that says, is that a good thing? So now I have a question that's based on my life and the question leads me to specific information that is relevant and applicable to how I can change my routine, which the answer that I found was that it's actually not good to do cardio and weightlifting on the same day. It's better to do cardio on its own day. And so- Says I changed, who though? Says who? <laughs> right, says who, right? Says who? Um, <laughs> that's a good question, right? You got to find credible information. And so don't, you know, don't, don't do that based on my recommendation, but just with my own studies, you know, like I felt like that was a good move for me. So I moved my cardio to other days. But the point is- cardio, not cardio. The point is if you study your own life you and you and where you want to go, you now have specific direction to what kind of information you need to help you go from where you're at now to where you want to go. And that information I believe is going to be much more impactful than just consuming 
you know, whatever podcasts and books and movies and just in the name of personal development, like, oh, personal development's good. So let's just go read and read and read and watch and watch and watch and watch and never apply. You know, Af Jim Rohn said, affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Well, what is discipline? Discipline is actually doing the thing in your life every day. That's discipline. So it like set a vision for yourself. Like, where is it that you want to go? And then start studying your life on a daily basis and then consume information and follow people based on, on that. Like, I'm not here to say I'm not going to follow anyone, but I'm going to say that, like, if I need to learn uh, a certain marketing strategy, a certain lead gen strategy, rather than following someone who's teaching me 25 different marketing strategies, I'm going to find someone who is really good at the strategy that I need to know and then I'll consume that information and apply it right into my schedule real time as I'm moving forward. I love that. I want to backtrack for a second to so when you said back when I was on Twitter, because you said this um, in one of the audios too, back when I was on Twitter. And I love this because I want you to um, speak to the myth that many people believe that we need to be everywhere all the time in order yeah. to be successful as marketers. Yeah. And so when I heard you say back when I was on Twitter and you just said it here, I quit Twitter. Like <laughs> we're allowed to do that. Did you guys yeah, know that? Are. Like we're allowed to just be done. I think you pretty much quit Facebook too. So can you yeah. talk a little bit about, um, you know, your, cause I, I this is, you know, this is a, a topic that's really near and dear to my heart because you know, especially when it comes to like content marketing is like my favorite thing and yeah. what I've been doing for a really long time. And so when you're putting valuable content out onto the internet, um, there is a myth that a lot of people believe that in order to have any success with that, you need to be on every single platform known to man. So right. I know that- um, Omnipresence, right? Is what they call it. You want to be omnipresent yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And you, so you just said that you quit Twitter and- um, I believe you've really, really, really scaled back and are really focused on one main um, place to be putting your content now. And so I would love for you to kind of talk about um, why you're doing that. And I, I just want to share your philosophy because I feel like it's, this is where, when I said in the beginning, like you might hear something that's different than yeah. what you've been told by anybody else. I love your, um, your philosophy on this and what you're you're doing i love that you're actually doing it like you're like okay 2021 this is where you can find me and that's it yeah you know so um yeah. and and that being said before you riff on this everything when it comes to marketing is an experiment everything yeah right we never know what's actually going to work or not work until we actually do it right and and again it's like someone else might be having success with a certain thing and we think we have to do that and then we do it and we don't have success with it. So we don't know what's actually going to work for us until we actually do it. So, right. so I know you're doing this. And again, this is, this is an experiment. What's going to happen um, by doing this. We don't completely know yet because it's kind of uh, a new, you know, it's, it's a new thing that you've kind of taken on, but I would love to um, hear your philosophy about this. All right. Well, here goes. <laughs> so um <laughs> The first thing is the fact that I love like Elon Musk and the way he thinks about things. And one of the things that if you study Elon Musk or anyone who talks about him, you always hear this phrase, first principles thinking, first principles thinking. It's like, well, what is it? Well, first principles thinking in Elon Musk's mind, as far as I understand it, is where he will break things down to the absolute bare minimum fundamental physics level of okay, what do we have to work with? What is necessary? And then build up from there where other people, they'll, they'll like, for example, people will say like, well, you can't build a more efficient battery. It can't be done. Things are too expensive. They'll have all these generalized conclusions that they put into a bucket and then say, well, it can't be done. And so what Elon Musk does is he says, well, let's actually break it down. Let's look down. Let's look at the ingredients um, the, the the chemical makeups, the cost, let's actually break it down to the very basic level. And then we can see what's possible from there. And so that thinking caused me to think about, well, what is actually required in, in marketing? Like what is required? Bare minimum, you know? And so um, what I think is, is 
you know, to make money, you have to have something to sell, right? Um, of course, you have to have a strong mindset, you have a vision, believe in where you're going, but then you have to have something to sell. So you've got you with your vision, where you want to go. You've got something to sell that you can exchange money for, unless you want to do it unethically, but we're all about principles. So you got to have something good to sell, right? So that's required. And then the only other thing that's required is people to sell to. That's it. And so those people can come from wherever you want them to come from. They can come from prospecting them on Facebook. They can come from finding your blog posts on Google. They can come from making a YouTube video. They can come from a Google ad. There's so many places they can come. But the point is, what's necessary is the people, not 10 different strategies. And so if you know that it's necessary to have people to find you, then the next question is, well, what is going to be your method? Like, what is going to be your method? Are you going to have five or 10? Or are you going to have, are you going to have one? And so, um, and so there's that kind of thinking that, that's been going into my thought process. And then, um, and, then a, and then aside from that is like, um, you know, once you have your method of having people find you, that's like, that's like people that are being introduced to you. So you, you definitely need that. But then the other thing that you need beyond that is you need an, a way to follow up with those people after they're in your world and after they're on your list, right? And so how do you follow up with people after they've gotten in? And some of the thoughts that I've had recently um, on this topic are, well, um, number one, um, there's, this, there's this concept called repeat, repeat traffic where people, they get to know you, they get in your world, and then they, they keep coming back because you're serving them and you're giving good value. But then the question is, how do they find you? Like, how, where do they find you? You know, um, and some mistakes I feel that I've made in the past is I would send out, I would do a Facebook live video and then I would send that video to my list so that now my, the people on my list are like, oh, well, Paul's doing content on his Facebook profile. Or another time I might send out um, a blog post or another time I might send out, you know, some uh, like a Zoom, maybe I'll do a Zoom and then I'll uh, publish it on the cloud. So I'll send that out to my list. And so logically what I think I've done is I've trained people not to know where to find me, you know, because it's like I'm, I'm everywhere. And so just logically thinking, um, if I want people to know where to find me, then I must be clear on where I'm going to be found. And I must continue to tell people where I'm going to be found. Um, and I must emphasize that. And so for my follow-up strategy, um, in my mind, the very best place for people to find you, like if you're going to plant your flag and say, this is where Amy is, this is where whoever you are, this is where you can find me. Um, I think, um, you know, I think there's some things to think about. Like, for example, the, the recent D platform, it's not just recent, but like for the last decade, uh, third party platforms are famous for de platforming marketers, content creators. I had a YouTube video that had 400 videos on it. My very first channel, leads coming in galore. YouTube shut it down, you know, for whatever reason. No recourse, no way to get my videos back, just all gone. Um, and that's not a unique story. That's a, actually a very common story. And so, do you want people to be trained to find you on YouTube? Um, well, you can do that as long as you're okay with the risk that someday YouTube might destroy your platform. And now those people that you've spent all this time and effort building up, now they don't know how to find you. And so for that reason, for 2021 and beyond, I feel like the best thing for me is to focus on building my brand, my blog, um, train people, hey, this is Paul Hutchings with paulhutchings.net. You know, just say that type of a thing so that when they get to, used to hearing it over and over and over, and I know this happens because I do it. It's like, I'll follow someone that I resonate with. And then one day I'll be like, oh, I wonder what that person said lately. And then I'll go find them. Have they posted any new content? You do this, right? We all do this. Like where, but so if people know that they can find me on paulhutchings.net, like what's Paul said lately? Oh, do I go check on Facebook or YouTube? No, nope, he's at paulhutchings.net. Now I'm training my audience to always go there to find me. And I think that's smart for two other reasons. Um, one is that uh, it's important to brand yourself. Like it literally, I, I actually heard this on a training I went through recently 
which I know is true because I verified it in my own experience, which is he said, people buy and join as much or more because of you and who you are, who Amy is. Like they're not just buying the widget because they want the widget. They're buying the widget from Amy because Amy's a leader and she has experience and she's lifting and inspiring their lives. And so if that is true, what better way to cultivate an audience that knows, likes, and trusts you than to bring them to your blog where they can see your name, like your name, who you are, you're building your brand, you're, you're, you know, you're building that relationship with them. So I think that's um, also important. And then the last reason that I'm focusing on my blog is, is, and I mentioned this in one of these audios that you were referencing, Amy, is that um, if I bring people back to my blog, they have an opportunity to consume my content, which hopefully will help them and also hopefully will um, induce them to know, like, and trust me, <laughs> my hidden agenda. That's <laughs> not so hidden. We all do that, right? Um, which is good. And that can happen on YouTube. That can happen if I send them to a YouTube video. That can happen if I send them to a Facebook video. But what can only happen on my blog is while they're consuming that content, they could do a little looking around and be like, oh, what's this menu bar? Oh, there's a, an about Paul section. Oh, I can see a video about Paul's story. Oh, I can read Paul's story. Oh, I can be inspired by Paul's story. And what's that? what that's that's doing is that selling them more on, on me. It's, it's deepening that relationship versus if I send them to a piece of content that's on uh, iTunes or um, uh, you know Facebook, well, they're consuming my content. Now, while they're consuming my content, they're getting distracted by like notifications, comment notifications, advertisements. And so now they're not gonna be focused on my content. Not only are they not gonna be focused on my content because they're being intentionally distracted, but now they're gonna be distracted by things that when they click off the content, those don't serve me at all because they're clicking on other people's stuff and they're leaving me. But if they're on my blog, when they click on something, it's serving me, which my intention is to serve them. So I like to think that it's serving them also to keep them focused um, you know, on my, on my blog. You, know, you can have a little advertisement under your content to give them a lead magnet, maybe get them back into a, a new sales process. Like all of that can happen um, if, you do, you know, if you do your follow-up uh, with, your, with your blog. So I think, I think that's it. I mean, I think those are the main thoughts and reasons why I'm kind of focusing um, oh, well, and then I guess the last one would just be um, simplicity. Like I, I, I don't want my follow-up to be complicated and stressful. And one, one big realization I've had, Amy, is like, I don't know if you noticed, but some of those last audios, I'm recording them on my way home from the gym with a phone app. And like one of them, you could hear me opening the door and getting out, you know, while I'm, and so like there's this myth out there that blogging is hard, <laughs> you know, like it's like blogging is hard. It's stressful. Like you have to create all this crazy content. You have to search engine, optimize, optimize it and all this kind of stuff. It's like, well, only if blogging is your strategy for leads and search engine optimization. But if you've got another way of getting people to you and you're using your blog as your follow up. Blogging is the easiest thing in the world. It's as simple as recording a little audio on your way home from the gym, emailing it to yourself, publishing it, putting just like a two or three sentence intro, and then boom, your blog post is done. Mail it out to your list. You're done with your follow-up, right? Um, you could do videos on your blog. So blogging is actually can be really, really easy, I think, for, and especially for follow-up if you do it in the right way. So, Oh, you're muted, Amy. Can you hear me now? Yes. You can? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I thought I was muted because I, I was chiming in to say in one of your audios, I could tell that you just worked out because you were still out of breath and you're like, hey, guys, <laughs> yeah. I'm on my way home from the gym. And I love that because, like you said, it just it demonstrates to people that you can do this from your car on your way on your way home. It doesn't have to be like you don't have to sit down with in some studio and carve out all this extra time and you know, and it's, so you're being, you're demonstrating that, but you're also just being completely um, transparent and humble. And, you know, it's, you're showing people that it's, all that matters is the content. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All the fancy editing and lighting and all that stuff isn't ever going to provide transformation for people. It's, yeah. 
It's the actual content. And people and, don't um, want that other stuff, right? Like they don't want to have to put a big studio up with lights everywhere and have like, like they want simple. I want simple. Mm -hmm. So they want mm -hmm. simple. So if you can show that it's simple, then that, I think that, um, the, you know, I, I picked up a phrase from a great marketer. It was, the phrase is positive expectancy, which basically means that in everything you're doing in your sales process, you want people to consume that and say to themselves, that looks easy. I could do that, you know? So, yeah, so that kind of feeds mm -hmm. into that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that goes for, for all marketing strategies. I always say, like, if, if I want to join let's say I'm looking to join like a network marketing company or something. I'm not going to join somebody whose main strategy is prospecting people face to face. Cause I don't want to do that. Yeah. So that's not somebody that I want to learn from. <laughs> it's not the lifestyle that I want. You know, I've shared about how like my, my first network marketing company, um, I did three way calls out the yin yang. I mean, that's what I was doing. I was prospecting and then getting people on the phone with my upline yep. and my upline a few levels up were the top leaders in the company and they were crown diamonds in the company. And they spent their entire day, every day on the phone doing three-way calls with their huge downline. And I, after a while I was like, so the goal that I have is to be at that rank, but when I'm at that rank, I'm going to be on the phone all day. So like, yeah. I, I like fun. sabotaged my own success subconsciously because I was just like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I think it's really powerful what you're doing because you're showing people like you don't need any fancy equipment. You don't need a gazillion different marketing strategies. You don't need, you know, all you need is like your inspiration that you just had when you're at the gym yeah. and like, share it with your audience. And it's super, super, super powerful. And what's, what's the best content? It's when you're inspired, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we're not inspired 24 hours a day. Unfortunately, there are those times in our day where we have this thought and we're just like, wow, I'm excited about these thoughts. And like, that's the best time to create content, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have a lot of my best thoughts when I'm on the beach, like walking my dog or in the shower for whatever reason. I've, I've read different things about why we have so many inspired ideas in the shower but it's got something supposedly has something to do with the water. But, oh, um, wow. but in any case, I, I totally agree. A lot of times we'll have these inspired ideas and maybe we jot them down to create something later, but they're never going to, it's never going to be as powerful as if you whip out your camera or your microphone right then and there in the moment in your car or while you're walking down the street and you just yep. speak from the heart right then and there. I think that, that, um that goes back to like what I always talk about being on mission when you're, you know, you don't, you don't have stage fright when you are, you know, that you have something to deliver to people that That's is good. Com coming That's from important. your, yep. you're yep. going to connect with them on a heart level and it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be edited and it, you don't have to worry about messing up because it's, you know, it's coming through you for a reason at that moment. And yeah, that's the kind of stuff that's going to connect more than, more than anything else. Um, yeah. There was a line that popped up as I was listening to you talk, <clears throat> um, this line that says, um, uh, arrogance is the need to be heard and self-confidence is the need for the message to be heard. Mm. And when you felt like you were saying, like, if you, if you have a message that's, that somebody needs, you know, like somebody needs the message, then it's not about whether you're scared and it's not about what are people going to think of me or how is this going to make me look? It's that people need this message, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So a um, couple things that I want to tangent on about what you were talking about. Um, so I, you know, I, I love the blog for the same reasons you were talking about as far as like all of the distractions, you know, um, on social media, you know, you can get your stuff in front of people on Facebook, but, or on YouTube, the, the length of time that they're going to stay on your video is going to be a lot shorter on those platforms than it's going to be on your blog because there are so many other distractions. You know, yep. they've got all this other stuff moving around them where there's like, you know, recommended videos and shows you who's online that you can chat with and whatever. So people's attention spans, I mean, I think, I think our attention spans um, as time goes on get shorter and shorter because of the advancements in technology and just how fast everything is moving at this point. I mean, I, I see it with my kids, like their attention spans compared to mine. I mean, mm -hmm. I could go out and like look for salamanders under rocks <laughs> for hours. These kids these days, like they got to be constantly like 
you know, like their, their attention span, like they don't have that kind of focus anymore that we had then. Yeah. And it's by design, like the mm -hmm. social dilemma. Have you seen that? The Netflix documentary? No, I should um, watch that. It's worth watching. Like if you want to learn a little bit about behind the scenes with social media, but like they've invested billions of dollars with um, the world's most highly trained and specialized behavioral uh, scientists at places like Harvard and Yale with the goal of how do we give people dopamine rushes and how do we addict them to our platforms. And uh, so this isn't something that's just happened on accident. Like there's yeah. conscious intent and mass amounts of money going into it. And so that like, that's another thing just from my standpoint, like I, I'm not saying anyone who's on social media should get off social media. Like that's all of our own decisions. But what I noticed in myself was that for like three years now, I've known that social media was not good for my state and my psychology. And I found myself like, you know, like running and checking my phone. Like I'd be doing something with my family and I would run in the bedroom because I wanted to see my Facebook notifications. Mm -hmm. And I found myself doing this a lot. And mm -hmm. even though I knew I was doing it, I couldn't stop. Like I just, yeah. I kept doing it. And so for me, that's just another underlying thing behind my shift in marketing this year is I don't want to be a slave. Like I, I want to, I don't want that. Like I don't want that in my life. I want to be in charge. And so um, I didn't delete my social media accounts because I think there's still usefulness in um, having them. Like, like one of the, if you look up my name on the internet, one of the results is my fan page. So if I was to delete that, I would lose that opportunity for people to find me, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and then also like for backlinks, if you're doing content marketing, if you can share on social media for backlinks. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is that like, um, we just have to understand what's serving us and what's not serving us. And so for me, it wasn't serving me very well. And so I want to move forward in a way where it's serving me better. And so I made a promise to myself that this year I will never look at social media on my smartphone. So, and what I found is that that's pretty much cut it all out. Mm -hmm. But if I need to, I can still get on on desktop, you know, and do something mm -hmm. if I need to. But anyway, sorry, that was a tangent, but. No, that's all right. Let me ask you this though. So um, you're focusing on sending, you know, letting people know that where you can be found is at paulhutchings.net. Yeah. So how are you, other than, you know, you, you talked about repeat traffic, which I think is really important and, and yeah. extremely valuable to build kind of a culture around your brand where people, you know, myself included, like, I want to know what's Paul's latest piece of content because it's so good, you know, and I want to, I want to go check it out. So you're, you're training your audience to know, to find you there yeah. and only there and that you're always going to have value there that they can plug into. But yeah. how are you getting that value in front of new people? Like, how are you getting new traffic to come learn about you on your blog? Yeah, good question. So right now, um, I'm actually in the process of redoing my sales process. So as of right now, I'm doing nothing to get new traffic, <laughs> okay? Um, but I'm going to, right? As soon as I finish my my new sales process, because when it, this is, this is all, this might be useful thing to think about. Like um, when people join your list, what happens to them? You know, and like what's happened uh, to the people who joined my list in the past is they would join my list, they would get some sort of lead magnet, and then, um, and then they would get like just daily content, daily emails, uh, you know, and, and occasional calls to action. Occasionally I would do a promotion. Um, and, and that's worked, you know, and that's good. But I was, I've, I've been thinking about like, well, what if I was a little more scientific in it, in that when someone joins my list, so like one thing that I know for sure works is promotions where you do some sort of special offer that's time sensitive, um, maybe you add some bonuses to whatever it is that, you know, you're offering people and then you, and then you cut it off. I, I know that works cause I've done it so many times and you have too, Amy, like mm -hmm. that just plain works. So if it works, why not make it evergreen? So what I'm doing right now is I'm having like an email series of seven or 10 emails or whatever. 
And the idea is day one, they get my lead magnet. Day two, they get uh, who I am, you know, which is what Nick teaches in the 30 minute work day. Just like, Hey, who the heck am I? You know, nice to meet mm-hmm. you. That's day two. Uh, tomorrow, wh- you know, if you're serious about building residual income, tomorrow's going to feel like Christmas morning, watch for day three. So then day three is an introduction to my business, like a video, like, a, and I'll call it a soft introduction because it's just more of a, you know, Hey, I just want to, you know, share with you what I'm doing and why I'm excited about it, but no uh, time sensitive calls to action. So that's like one, two, three. And then the idea, idea is the next few emails that are going to go out are going to be, um, I'm going to have a bonus offer, right? Where I'm, I, I want to stack this bonus together um, where I, I, I share like for the fast action takers, like, okay, you, you've got value from me. You've, um, you've got to know me a little bit. Um, you've seen what it is that I'm doing. And just in case you're like thinking about like, Hey, I might want to do this, but you haven't pulled the trigger. And that's how people are, right? Like we see things like we are just not used to just like moving on things. And so that has to be encouraged. And so the idea is with the next few emails, I'm going to show them my bonus offer and it'll be like a 72 hour deadline where, um, they have to join and then whatever package they buy, they'll have, you know, some, some bonus incentive and then that'll cut off. And so the idea is that will happen all the time. So that'll be there always. Whenever someone mm-hmm. new joins my list, that's always happening. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to send them any emails while they're in that promo sequence. And then once they get through the promo sequence, then they'll move to my broadcast list. And so once that's done, um, now forever, whenever I send out an email for my, on my blog, um, they come back to my blog, they have a chance to re-enter that, you know, that promotion sequence. And so mm-hmm. I just think that that's like, it's worth taking my time to do that. So now to your question, um, my thought is I'm going to focus on, um, I'm not actually positive what I'm going to focus on. <laughs> I know YouTube, so, you know, YouTube SEO, probably some blogging, but I also want to mix in some paid because my goals are requiring that I leverage myself past what I can do with my content creation. Mm -hmm. And so just some initial thoughts that I've had, um, like, you know, with YouTube and, and even a blog is like, if you're going to be doing content marketing where you're wanting to get ranked in the search engines, One simple thing to do to add on to that, if you want to do some paid marketing is just run paid ads to the content. And so like, let's say I do a YouTube video on a company review and a blog post that's done. Now I run paid ads. So now I have instant eyeballs on that content and that is feeding back into my SEO strategy. If I want to come back around and then move that content up in the search engines. And so those are some of the things that I'm kind of leaning towards. Um, but I'm also open, you know, back to what we talked about earlier is like, once I get my promo sequence done, next step is now I can focus 100% of my time on driving traffic with the exception of my 10 minute follow-up, but that's easy. But then all my other business time is driving traffic. So then it will be, um, you know, what things can I do or can I learn to just put as much principle centered quality traffic into that funnel as possible. And, um, and I'm open, you know, open to whatever, whatever comes at that point. So. Mm-hmm. That was probably not a great answer well, to your question. <laughs> well, no, it's good. And I love how you said you're open because again, that that just circles all the way back to the beginning where you're listening to what's going to come through on your, your own intuition and your own yeah. inner voice because you're not letting that be drowned out by trying to figure it out based on what someone else is doing as their, yeah. as their strategy, right? Like, right. I feel like, I mean, watching you come to where you're at right now I can tell that it's all based on just a knowing that you have of what to do next. And the only way that we can know what to do next like that is to be tuned in, be tuned out to what other people are doing enough to be tuned in to what is best for us. Yeah. So, I mean, all all the books talk about that and we've learned it in our own experience that when you have a strong vision and you believe wholeheartedly in your vision and you're taking action consistently um, so that you're in alignment with that vision, you know, like Napoleon Hill said, uh, if you want to get results from prayer, you must live in such a way so that your whole life is a prayer. When you're living like that, my experience has been that the right answers, they show up. So yeah. like, you know, what's my traffic strategy? I've shared with you some initial thoughts, but I know it will show up when I get Mm -hmm. to that point where that's the next step. It will be there. I will find it, you know, and so will everybody, you know? Right. Well, exactly. And, you know, it's, I'm a true believer in that, you know, we, we need to have a vision and we, you know, 
we know where we want to go, but how we're going to get there isn't really up to us to know. Like we'll be yep. shown that each step of the way, like each day you'll be shown what to do next. Yep. Yep. You don't need to know the whole picture ahead of time because it'll just come if you're, if you're, if you're paying attention. I mean, and, yep. and that goes with everything like doing this interview. I didn't plan this out. Like I had an inspired moment where I was listening to Paul's content and I'm like, I want to have a conversation with him about this. And so I reached out to him and here we are. And, and that's kind of how I go every day too. And my business is just like listening to my, my inspiration and my intuition. And I think that the best things in life and business come from living like that. Mm. which yeah, is me too which is why i have this podcast called living in alignment because <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know and it's fun too right like it's yeah. it makes it more of a journey mm -hmm. whereas like you don't have to know every single thing it's like just act on the thing that comes to you and then you just you live in it and then it's like well i wonder what's going to be the next step well i don't know for sure but it will be there when i get there as long as i perform this step well get that done okay, now we're ready for the next one. And it's yeah. just a fun journey, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes even mystical, you know, where things happen and you're just like, wow, you know, mm -hmm. like I am living in alignment. Like I'm getting these little winks and confirmations and, you know, what have you that, you know, I'm moving in the right direction. It's just a mm -hmm. good way to feel and live, Absolutely. you know? Well, when, well, that's, that's exactly it. How you feel. Like I was listening to, um, Abraham Hicks yesterday on my walk and, uh, they were talking about exactly that, how, you think that it's about the destination, mm. but it's not <laughs> like the goal is to feel as good as you possibly can in every moment. And it's about the journey. It's about mm. if you do that, you're just your destiny, your destination will unfold in such a beautiful way. But so much of the time, so many people are focused on getting somewhere else and not being where you are right now. Yeah. And when you're where you are right now and just enjoying the moment to its fullest every moment, that's when the inspiration comes and gives you the answers about what to do next anyway. I find that a lot of the success, like a lot of the actual like money that comes into my business happens when I'm not working. Have you ever noticed mm. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yep. I'm on a road yep. trip with my daughter <laughs> yeah. and I have my phone on the dashboard and I'm getting commission notifications. Yeah. Like feeling guilty for taking time off, driving down the road and all of a sudden money <laughs> starts coming in. Or when I went to Hawaii years ago with Chris and Jordan, I made more money while I was on that trip surfing and like <laughs> doing sightseeing and whatever. Like I kept being like, I just made another $3,000. And they're like, how are you doing that? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just like <laughs> in the vibration, right? Like that's, yeah. I think, think that's such a huge part of it. And then from that place, we have inspiration that we can share that inspires other people. And yeah. just like the snowball effect from there. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And I love that, that you talked about that because it can be just a beautiful, um, experience if we just allow it to be moment moment mm -hmm. to moment yep yeah and that's a big yeah. aha moment i think for maybe people who are just getting started is to know that that's absolutely true that you you're gonna get to where you think that it's like this is the be all end all goal like if, when i just get here like everything's gonna be great and happy and and you know you're gonna get there and then you're gonna find that you need another journey to keep being happy, you know, so you'll have, you know, another journey. It just, yeah, it just continues. And, and I think that just allows us to, um, to enjoy it now, you know, wherever we're at, make sure that we're enjoying it, make sure that we're, you know, doing the things that we want that are in alignment that bring us happiness and peace and, and joy, you know, along the way. So. Absolutely. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I know it's, um, we're at the top of the hour and I don't, I want to respect your time, but, um, um, in just wondering if you have any closing thoughts that you want to leave people with, or I'm, you know, if, if you want to talk about something else, we certainly can. I just want to, um, you know, respect your time and see, see if yeah. there's anything we forgot or left um. out. I guess just like the biggest encouragement I would have for myself and, and everyone is to just really strive to focus on 
things that are, are, that are useful to your life and that you c- can do something about. Um, cause I think like now more than ever, like I didn't, I didn't think it could get any worse. Um, but I think it has like with the ability, the outside world has to intrude into our lives and wreak absolute havoc on our state of being, on our happiness, mm-hmm. on our expectations. Like the world is getting better at that, a lot better than it, than it used to be. And so what is required now is more willpower than ever before and more consciousness than ever before yeah. that we must learn to tune all of that out and focus on the things that are, that are useful and that we can have control over. And um, I just, I just want to give you just a couple little examples. Um, you know, we're in a crazy political environment right now. And I'm sure that even if you're not watching the news, people, you know, are telling you, you know, about the news and people are calling you. I have relatives calling me like, holy crap, I went down the rabbit hole and ah, it's all going to hell. We're screwed, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um and so like, it's really easy to get sucked into that type of a thing. And, and it's also really easy to instead focus on your vision and focus on the things that you can control. And, you know, I've got this, um, I don't know if you've been using it, Amy, uh, this app that I sent you that my I friend have been. I created. like it. Thank you. Yeah. So there's this little vision board that you can create on your phone. And so one of the things I've been doing every morning is looking at my vision board and, you know, you've got like money, you've got health, you've got relationships. And so with, um, on my vision board, I have a picture of my, my happy family, you know, this picture of my family. And it's like, I want to, I want a happy family. And so what I found is that when I'm looking at that in the morning, I'm asking myself questions like, what can I do to have a happy family? And last week I invited my wife, Kareen on a date. I planned it out. Um, we did these really cool things and it was amazing to me to, so like we've got four kids and anyone who has kids knows that having kids can be super stressful. Um, and so sometimes my kids, they wear on, on my wife. Um, and that's normal. Like they wear on her to where, you know, her state of happiness is not <laughs> what it could be. And so when we first left on the day, it was kind of in that, in that state. But as we went over the evening and we had dinner and there was a point where I played some music and we were dancing together, I literally saw her light up like her her state of being like she just became filled with with happiness you know towards the end of the evening and I told her I was like you know um you're beautiful always and you're even more beautiful when you're happy and I had an M I like had I not been looking at my family and asking myself what can I do like that experience would not have happened I could have been focused on how bad the world is on how it's all falling apart. And then that experience would not have happened. And I can tell you other stories about, you know, my kids, like yesterday I took my youngest son, Cashton, um, we went and had hot chocolate together and we just sat across from each other, had hot chocolate, laughed, told stories, you know, and that wouldn't have happened had I not been looking at what I can control, what can I have an impact on? And then asking myself, What can I do about that? Like we can do so much to make our lives better um, if we'll just learn, you know, to to do that. And um, um, it's not the easiest thing, but it is really worthwhile. So I just love to give everyone a challenge to, like we mentioned earlier, you know, learn to just be a real student of your own life, become a master of focusing on what you can control and the actions that you can take to make your life better And then, you know, try to tune everything else out. You know, you're like, could it really be that simple? I think so. (laughs) You know, like I really do. So anyway, those, I guess those would be my closing thoughts, Amy. Thanks for letting me share that. I have my vision board on my phone too. And what I'm doing this year is I'm doing a vision board every month instead of like a big vision. Oh, cool. Like, what do I want to create this month? And I have it on my desktop background as well. So that every time I open my computer, it's right there. It definitely makes such a huge difference to see it all the time. Cause I think a lot of times with vision boards, we, you know, it's a fun craft and then like, you never look at it again. And I also wrote out with each image I'm writing out, um, not in this future tense, but like in the past tense, like 
what it what it this image means to me because every image on there just by looking like if you look at my vision board you'll be like what the heck is all this like, what does it <laughs> yeah mean? but for me it's symbols of different things that are important to me and mm. a lot of the stuff on there is like smiling people which signifies <laughs> yeah. like my audience or like family you know and uh. you know like it's not my family but it signifies like my family and like yeah. that different stuff and so just to to really like be checking in with with what's important to me every time i pick up my phone and every time i open my computer because it's right there mm. um is huge it's just you know it's another way to really tune out the distractions and focus on my dreams and my goals and what matters to me mm. and um yeah. yeah and um i'll share this one last thought that I was um, saw this show recently, and I don't even remember what it was. This there, there was a scene where they sh they played the scene, and then they played like the 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 scene that was like not reality, and then they played the reality, and it was the same scene where this woman walks into a bar, and in in the first the first scene she walks in, she's like super confident, she's like strutting through the bar, all the heads are turning, looking at her like, who's this woman? You know, <laughs> she sits down at the bar, the bartender's like right there, and she's just like, you know, powerfully and in a powerful way, like orders her drink like she owns the place, you know. <laughs> And then they show the reality where she comes like timidly walking into the bar. <laughs> Nobody notices that she's there. She's afraid to sit at the bar because she doesn't know if the seats take, like, it's just like a completely different thing. And it, it, it had to do with whatever the, the movie was, but I, you know, I, I interpreted it as like, imagine if we all walked in, through our lives, like standing up tall and just like, walking mm -hmm. through our life like we own it like it doesn't i think so many people including myself i mean i've, I've been a victim of this as well have like we hold back based on being worried what somebody else is going to yeah. think about what mm -hmm. we have to say yep. or how we want to do things and we never um exercise our full potential in life because of that mm -hmm. so when i saw that i was like i'm just gonna like that's how I'm, i want to walk through my life like that and just like if people are turned off by what I have to say or the way I'm doing things, then they know where the door is. Yeah. Like, they don't we have don't to pay attention anyway, to me. Right? We don't want them anyway, right? Yeah. We don't want them anyway. Like those yeah. are the smiling faces on your board, <laughs> you know? Get them yeah. out. See ya. Exactly. But how can you serve the people that do want what you have if you're being like timid about it, right? Yeah. You can't. And so concerned about what everyone you know else is thinking, and that that stimulated another thought from that Twitter feed from that Naval guy, as he said, um, "You're either playing two games for the most part. You're either playing the money game or the status game." Mm. And like on social media, like oh man, so much of it is about status. Like oh, I'm going to post this picture, and what are they going to think about this? You know. And mm. then and then he also said like people who make fun of those who are focused on the money game they're playing the status game because what they what they're doing is they're like oh see amy she's so focused on her business and all she cares about is money and that makes me so good <laughs> you know because they're playing the status game and so um yeah like like folk we all have to play the money game so why not be really good at it and uh and and play the status game you know less and less like who cares what people think like you know mm -hmm. who cares what people think so mm -hmm. yeah Yep. And if we tune out of what everyone's saying a little bit more, I think we'll just naturally care less and less. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, mm -hmm. I'm just I'm putting all my content on my blog. Well, I don't have anywhere near the engagement I had on my um, Facebook account. So what? Like, maybe less is good. <laughs> you know, well, like, plus we got to think long term, right? Are you are we thinking about how many likes we're going to get from this post, or are we thinking about creating a library of valuable content, right? That will be there forever, that will serve people forever. Yes. And regardless of how much engagement it gets right now, now like, yep. You know, because yep. I mean, that's that's the way I like to. Th I've always thought about content that way, like like little fish hooks out in the ocean where people can you know, get value from you and be served by you and find yep. you. Yep. And the more we, we do that, like consistently, the more consistently we show up and provide value for people, the more opportunity people have to find us. If we're just concerned with, you know, a post on social media, I mean, most social media platforms, that post only has a very short shelf life. Very anyway. short. 
Yep. So it doesn't matter if you get hundreds or thousands of likes and comments on it. It's nobody's going to find that ever again after like right. tomorrow. Yep. Right. So that's the other thing about social media that um, as much as I like it for certain things that have never really spoken to me about it is that that temporary, especially like some of the platforms where like if you go live, it disappears. It disappears. Once, <laughs> like, like what? Like that's my time and my content. I don't want it to disappear. Yeah. But if it disappears, then you have to come back and make another one. Yeah. See how it serves them? Like mm -hmm. <laughs> they're literally manipulating us in a lot yeah. of ways. You know? Well, I'm noticing like that new app, that clubhouse app, app that, um, you know, you were referencing in, in your audio, like I set up an account on there and I never go on there, but the amount of no notifications that I get, I need to turn, figure out how to turn them off. But like, there's like hundreds of conversations going on and it's a FOMO <laughs> thing because it doesn't record anything. Right. So it's oh, right. the fear whole thing out. is based on fear of missing out. Like, oh my gosh, I just got a notification that they're talking about the next best X, Y, Z. And if I don't get <laughs> right. on now, I'm going to miss out. And some of these conversations go on for days. Like, <laughs> I know, that's insane. you know, like ongoingly and they come in and they're, and so people get, I, and that's what I've been hearing about it is like, people get like totally addicted to it because like their, their husbands are like, why have you been on that app for like six hours? Like, who are you listening to for six <laughs> hours? And it's because right. it's, it's not recorded. And it's like, you got to be there at the time. <laughs> you got to be that there. Kind of You're going to miss the secrets. Yeah. So <laughs> for me personally, I'm like, I think it's best for me to not even go there because I don't need another distraction. Yeah. That's and, how I um, feel about it also. You know, I mean, I get that there's, there's pros to it and it is a way to, you know, get in front of people that might not know who you are and all of that. But yeah, I also just, um, I, I just don't want to get, I mean, like you said, there's, there are actual strategies behind these platforms that are yeah. trying to get us addicted. And I don't want, I mean, if anything, I like your methodology and your way of thinking about like, like letting st st some stuff go by the wayside and, and being in less places yeah, rather than thinking I have to add one more. And, yeah. you know, again, yeah. to each their own, this is not, this conversation is not to try to convince anybody that you should do it this way or, you know, like what Paul's been talking about and how he's doing it. That's was not my intention behind this conversation at all. It's just to show that, there are other, you know, there are ways to do things that are different than what you might have been told, or there is a way to just like really listen to what you're being called to do. Yeah. Some people are being called to be on Clubhouse for six hours a yeah. day, and they're having success with that. Yeah. We see people that we know having success with it, yep. and that's awesome. Um, but when I tune into myself, I my inner voice says, stay off of that app because, you know, if you guys know me, I've been sober for 23 years. I have an addictive personality, so, so I do don't I. do moderation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm either all in or none at all, baby. <laughs> so I got to be careful of that kind of stuff. And I, I mean, I just love how you've simplified. Like to me, like the way what you're doing is just such a simplified way to do marketing. Like I love it. I just, I think it's... um profound actually you know because it's well hopefully it's so, it works we'll have to yeah. do a podcast in a month or so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no, i think I'd it will I, I think it will i think it'll work great so yeah that's my feeling yeah and i mean i i agree with the blog um you know it's nice to have a captive audience on there where if they are distracted by other stuff on your blog it's your stuff right and um it gives them the opportunity to go deeper with you rather than you know clicking away onto other people's stuff. So I think, you know, as far as that piece of the strategy goes to, to be, you know, and I, I mean, I think I, I'm thinking about, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking maybe I should start implementing some of this because even, you know, when I send out an email, I'm like, I just made a new video, click here to watch it on YouTube, click here to watch it on my blog, click uh, here to watch it on Facebook. Cause if I do a live, I stream live in multiple places. And then when I send out the email, I'm like, where am I sending people to watch the replay? Cause it's, mm. it's in three different places. Mm. And I think it's gotta be confused. Like, you know, on one hand, I'm like, okay, I'm making it easy for people to go to their favorite platform to watch it. But at the same time, like after listening to you, I'm like, am I confusing my audience? Like, 
like sometimes I'm sending them to YouTube. Sometimes I'm sending them to my blog. Sometimes I'm sending them to my Facebook page to watch a replay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I, I think well, there's and- a lot to be said for it. What you're doing. Yeah, and, and my thought is if you are posting content on YouTube, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, post it on there because that's one way people are going to come into your house. But mm-hmm. like I, what I'm doing is if I post a video on YouTube, I'm also uploading it to my Amazon server and I'm just putting it on my blog so that it's solid, secure, will be there forever. And then bring my follow, right. you know, bring my list back to my blog. Yeah. So. And I've always seen the blog as like the hub in the middle. And then you have like all your social media, YouTube ads, whatever out here. And everything drives people back to your blog, which is yeah. your hub, which is really the only thing that you actually own yourself. Yep. That can't get taken away from you. Yep. So, um, you know, I've always seen it like that. I love how you've now have it so that it's like, the main thing and like you know you haven't figured out this stuff yet exactly how you're gonna drive the people to it but i don't know it's it's awesome it's fascinating i hope that this has really um opened up some different perspectives for for people listening and um you know maybe to to help people realize that you don't have to be omnipresent to be successful yeah and um you can yeah, and your your voice is your inner voice is powerful like be careful of people who say you have to do this so you can't do this you must do it this way it's like you know just use use your thinking use your use your guidance and you know um you're at the end of the day we're all responsible for our own success or lack thereof mm-hmm. so like getting counsel and ideas from people is good because sometimes it can help shape our thinking But at the end of the day, what's going to make us all the most successful is when we learn to do our own thinking and follow, you know, follow our vision and follow our own inner voice. So the sooner, the better, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the main message that um, was my main intention with this, with this interview was to just really um, hit, you know, really hit that point home because I really feel like. Um, and I know this just from the people in my audience there that come to me for the answers all the time about mm-hmm. stuff. And it's like, yep. I don't have the answers for you. You know, right. like I can show you what I do and I can sh- tell you what I know about what I do, but it doesn't mean that it's the answer for you. Right. And I, you know, I, it's tough because, you know, I want to guide people and help people as yeah. much as possible. But I know that the you know, each person's journey is different and what's best for each person is different for each person. And so, um, this, this is just such a powerful conversation to, to, you know, like, like I said, that was my intention was to just really help people to give yourself credit to know that, you know, what's best for you more than anybody else does. Yep. And, um, yeah, you know, look what Oprah did by just trusting, you know, in herself and not listening to anybody else and like literally tuning everything out. I mean, look what's possible when you really, I think maybe a lot of people are afraid of how powerful they actually are. If they were actually to listen, a lot of the decisions that I've made that I thought I was crazy for making them came from like a knowing, like even moving my family across country, like, or I went to New Zealand for six months. And even today on the beach, I ran into this guy that I, you know, I run into the same people on the beach every morning with my dog. And he was asking me a question. Something came up about my trip to New Zealand, how I was in New Zealand for six months. And uh, he said, how did you end up in New Zealand? And I said, I had a recurring dream that I had to go there. <laughs> wow. So I sold everything I owned and people oh, thought wow. I was crazy. I thought I was crazy, but I'm like, there's a reason why I'm having this dream and I need to listen to it. And it was the most amazing, profound, enlightening six months of my life. Like, you know, so I feel like a lot of times we have these knowings and we're afraid to listen to them because they sound crazy or not status quo or whatever. We think other people are going to judge us yeah, for, you know, for making these decisions. But what I found is when I really listen to my heart, especially when it's scary, especially when I don't understand why, what's on the other side of that is always something life-changing. Mm-hmm. And I think yep. so many of us are just really afraid to really listen to our heart because it's not what the other people are doing or what are they going to think if I do that or, you know, or whatever. So, yep. Yep. 
Yeah. So anyway, you are a living, breathing example of what following your heart looks like. And thank you so much for sharing your heart with us today. And um, I'm really excited to share you with my audience. And um, (laughs) well, I can say the same about you. (laughs) And I'm excited to share you with my um, audience as well. (laughs) (laughs) Hope you listen. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So thanks again for being here. Thank you everybody who showed up and, and listened to this and um, we will talk to you all again soon. Anything else you want to say, Paul, in closing? Always go for your dreams. Love you guys. That's it. Always go for (laughs) your dreams.